last minute shakeup at 5.30 a.m., laundry situation not good. And when your focus is on helping your clients, it's easy to forget about yourself. But NASM knows trainers. Morning, Ryan. It's okay. And staying in front of the day isn't always nice as drive. simple as one, two, three. So when the unexpected has you pressing pause. What's the latest on creatine? I'm going to get back to you on that. Let NASM One help you press play. Visit nasm.org to sign up for a membership today. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to be talking about the shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint. And we're going to talk about the anatomy. So how do how do, how do the muscles of the shoulder move the shoulder? Now, we shall be talking about this only in when it comes to the, the muscle action spectrum. There is a concentric and eccentric and an isometric action. We're going to be talking about the concentric actions. So I'm not delving into the focus of what decelerates and what stabilizes, only the acceleration of movement in particular planes. So the first thing we're going to get to, and and by the way, this is just the glenohumeral joint. This is the shoulder joint. But if you look up shoulder joint, you may get answers for the shoulder girdle. So when we talk about movement in the sagittal plane, you might start seeing things like the serratus anterior. But the serratus anterior helps to move the shoulder girdle, but it does not move the glenohumeral joints. We're just looking at where the, um, the, the humerus connects into the glenoid fossa of the shoulder into the glenoid fossa. Luke, I am your fossa. All right, so let's get into it. We're going to be talking about first in the sagittal plane. Sagittal plane. Remember, a sagittal plane, you get your arm moving up and down, front and back. In the sagittal plane, initially, we're going to talk about shoulder flexion. Shoulder flexion, the arm raises up in front of you, maybe even over your head. So let's talk about shoulder flexion in the sagittal plane. Primarily, we're going to look at these muscles. And and this isn't necessarily an exhaustive list, but these are the ones that are mostly involved. There are other muscles that that could be involved. These are the muscles that are the majority. So here we go. Shoulder flexion, we get the anterior deltoid. The anterior deltoid is the front part of that triangular shaped deltoid muscle. And that's kind of broken into three different areas, the anterior, middle, and posterior deltoid. So the anterior deltoid can help to do shoulder flexion. And that one can take the arm all the way overhead. Now, so can the well, not all the way overhead, but the pec major. The pec major can also assist with shoulder flexion, about up to 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. So not overhead, but it allows the arm to move up into about 90 degrees because there are kind of origination points of the pec major. So there is a the proximal attachment and the distal attachment. The proximal attachments can be on... The, the lower portion of the pecs, and that can attach to the ribs or the costal portion. There is the sternal portion of the pecs. And then there is a clavicular portion of the pecs. And that clavicular portion is the one that can help us go into shoulder flexion. So we've got the anterior delts and the pec major. We also have a muscle called the coracobrachialis. The coracobrachialis can also do shoulder flexion, not some muscle that we hear about a lot. And this is one that I was like, oh, should I leave it? Should I I add it? But for those of you, for those who know, no. And for those of you who didn't, you can now add that to the list. This is one of those muscles that assist with shoulder flexion, along with the biceps brachii. That's right. Your biceps muscles can actually help you go into shoulder flexion. Now, it is an incredibly weak shoulder flexor. 
but it may also make sense as to why when people are doing bicep curls, they like to bring their elbows up in front of them. Also, they like to do that because it is uh, an absolute cheat that takes the muscle off the bicep and allows us to go into a little bit of flexion so we don't have to work as hard. But it is a shoulder flexor. The biceps can flex the shoulder in the sagittal plane. So we've got anterior delts, pec major, coracobrachialis, and the biceps brachii. So let's go into the opposite joint action of that. Still in the sagittal plane, shoulder extension. Now, shoulder flexion is when you raise the arm up in front of you. Shoulder extension is basically your starting point. You're already extended from a shoulder flexed position, but you can pull the arms back behind you even more, that shoulder extension. But let's say, for instance, you're doing a lat pull down. You stay in the sagittal plane. In order to pull your arm down into shoulder extension, you might need these muscles. Latissimus dorsi. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I guess it's clear when you do something like a lat pull down that the lats would be involved in that. And the lats are a very strong, they're a powerful shoulder extensor. But anything at the shoulder that the lats can do, the lats have a little brother. And the lats little brother can do anything the lats can do at the shoulder. And remember this, shoulders, we go into extension, that little muscle is called the teres major. The teres major. Now I say it's a little muscle and it's got major at the end of it, but it is a small muscle, but it is the bigger of the two teres muscles, teres major and teres minor. And the teres minor has nothing to do with this. doesn't do shoulder extension. The teres major is a shoulder extender because it is a little brother of the lats and brothers don't shake hands. Why? Because brothers got a hug. We also have another muscle called the pectoralis major that we just talked about being a shoulder flexor, but it also can be a shoulder extensor. How? Because of the amazing ability of such an awesome muscle. Remember we talked about the clavicular head can do shoulder flexion. Well, the costal heads, the costal portions can do shoulder extension. If you've ever done a really extensive pec workout, and you've been sore. And the next day you're like, I'm going to do my lats. And then you do your lats and you reach your arms overhead and that bar pulls you higher up. And all of a sudden you're like, man, this is killing my pecs. It hurts my pecs to do lat pull downs. That's because your pecs assist with lat pull downs. Because your pecs can do shoulder extension from that overhead position. Now it can't pull all the way down but it can pull from an overhead position down into an extended position. Also, the posterior deltoids. Remember, we've got those three different portions of the delts. And the posterior deltoids can also do shoulder extension. The anterior deltoid can do shoulder flexion. And we've got one more muscle I want to add to it. <clears throat> we've got a muscle called the triceps. Now, the triceps, we've got three heads because the word triceps means three, try for three, seps for heads. So the three heads, and there are two short heads and a long head, and the long head crosses the shoulder joint. It crosses over the glenohumeral joint, and that can lead to the triceps contributing to shoulder extension. If you have ever done lat pull downs, used to do this, clients would be like, oh, when I do lat pull downs, I feel it in my triceps. And I'd be like, that's crazy talk. It makes sense that you would feel it in your biceps because your biceps are flexing your elbow. Why do you feel it in your triceps? And I'd be like, I don't know, something, something's not right. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it that's not something's not right. It is actually makes sense because the triceps help to extend the shoulder just like the lats do, just like the teres major does, just like the pectoralis major does, just like the posterior deltoids. It's just not as strong of a shoulder extensor, but it can help to extend the shoulder. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the NASM CPT podcast is brought to you by NASM One, the membership for trainers and coaches. Members enjoy unlimited access to hundreds of career resources, 
Get the Edge app to schedule and program clients. Enjoy half off all certifications and specializations, access to free CEUs, and more. All of this for just $35 a month. Go to nasm.org slash membership to learn more about NASM One. We also have another plane of motion. So the sagittal plane is done. It's set apart. We are done with the sagittal plane. Let's go into the frontal plane. In the frontal plane, you've got two primary joint actions. You've got that glenohumeral joint abduction and adduction. So let's do adduction, adduction. Think about shoulder adduction, glenohumeral specifically, as when your arms are overhead and you pull them down in the frontal plane. So it's like a wide grip lat pull down. And if I do a lat pull down and I pull down in the frontal plane, what is bringing my arms down? We've got, again, this is not going to differ too much from shoulder extension. I've got the pectoralis major that is a contributor, but the latissimus dorsi and the teres major are big players. They are the primary glenohumeral joint adductors, ad. Ductors. Remember, add means to bring them together. I'm taking the arm overhead, and as I pull down, I am adding my arms back to the midline of my body. Not to be confused with abductors, abductors. To abduct is to take away. When people are abducted by aliens, they are taken away by aliens. And then aliens probe them and they send them back to the planet. So they have adducted them. They have added them back to the population. And when they show up and tell us the story, we're like, take them back. Aliens, take them back. We don't want them anymore. Abductors, abductors. What are the abductors? Well, the supraspinatus or supraspinatus is one of those abductors. Ductors. It actually initiates the action of glenohumeral abduction. And then we have the anterior and middle deltoids. Those both are nice contributors to the joint action of glenohumeral abduction. Now we've got the transverse plane, the final plane, the final countdown. Let's look at <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go internal and external rotators first, and then we'll look at horizontal AB and adduction. So let's go primary internal rotators of the shoulder. I've got my latissimus dorsi, and if my latissimus dorsi does it at the shoulder, then who does it? Proper. The teres major, you got it. Teres major, my latissimus dorsi, my pectoralis major, my anterior deltoid, and my subscapularis our primary internal rotators. What are those again? Let's go lats, teres major, pec major, anterior deltoid, and subscapularis are my internal rotators. Now, when people actually do, uh, they get like a shoulder impingement, you see people tend to do shoulder rotations, not internally, but you see them do external rotations. Why is that? Well, that's because almost all of these muscles, especially things like the supraspinatus, uh, which isn't an internal rotator, but it can create an impingement force. There are other muscles that create impingement forces that make the, the head of the humerus pull up into that glenoid fossa. And so we need some muscles that pull it down a little bit. And they happen to not only inferiorly translate the humerus, but they also tend to be external rotators. The teres minor and infraspinatus, which are two of the rotator cuff muscles, are external or lateral rotators. But those two muscles are, are very important when it comes to lowering the head of the humerus, pulling that head of the humerus away from the glenoid fossa when it comes to movement or a counter movement. As we get upward forces into the glenoid fossa, those muscles have to pull the humeral head down. 
That's why you see people doing external rotation exercises a lot of times to strengthen those muscles so that then you can then add them functionally back into doing movement and they do their job of counterbalancing some of these movements. So external rotators at the shoulder joint, teres minor and the infraspinatus. By the way, we also have the posterior deltoid, which is like the bigger muscle that's not a rotator cuff muscle that also contribute. But the teres minor is the op is not the opposite it's the small version of that terry's major remember terry's major is an internal rotator terry's minor is an external or lateral rotator now what muscles do horizontal abduction think about that being a uh, rear delt fly all right give me one muscle you can think of that can do a rear delt fly one muscle that can do a rear delt fly just one that does a rear delt fly that's like, what's the, can somebody give me the number? What's the number? I forgot the number to 911. Anyway, a rear delt fly will be the rear delt. So the posterior deltoid, but also the infraspinatus and the teres minor contribute to that. That is why we really need to see more people doing horizontal abductions. We need to see more people doing horizontal plane rows because we've got all of those big muscles that are internal rotators. We've got shoulder horizontal adduction, like the anterior delt and the pec major. And so that's a bench press position, horizontal adduction. And so if we're doing horizontal adduction, I've got the big muscles like the pec major, the anterior delt. Horizontal abduction, we get small muscles like the posterior deltoid, infraspinatus teres minor. And so strengthening that horizontal abduction can give us strength, can bring balance to the force in an area that has smaller muscles and an area that should probably be focused on when it comes to balancing out our movement. Because a lot of times people are like, hey, we're going to do a push and pull routine and they'll push in the horizontal plane, horizontal adduction to work the pecs. And then we say, okay, now work the back and they'll do shoulder extension. They'll do shoulder adduction, but they won't do shoulder horizontal abduction. And so that doesn't actually balance out. What balances out horizontal adduction is horizontal or transverse plane abduction. So you can't balance something out by not balancing it out. by Just because you say, let's do a push and a pull, or just because you say, let's do pecs and back, doesn't mean you've balanced the workout. So balance your planes of motion, balance your joint actions, bring balance back to the force. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. And if you've got questions for me, hit me up. You can do so on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or email me rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.